Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. After the United States entered the chip subsidy track, European countries followed suit and started large-scale chip subsidies. At first, many people thought that the EU wanted to break the situation. After all, as the scope of US technological hegemony continues to expand, if they do not stand up on their own, it is very likely that they will become the next one. In fact, the EU did express at that time that they wanted to form strong competitiveness in cutting-edge fields. But as time goes by, it seems that Europe's chip subsidies have begun to change, and they have moved closer to the core technology of the United States, constantly wooing Intel companies to build factories and providing large subsidies. Many analysts believe that if the EU cannot compete with US chip subsidies in terms of subsidies, it is likely to be forced out. After all, under the high subsidies in the United States, many European companies want to set up factories in the United States. They were even warned about this at the beginning, hoping that they would implement chip subsidies as soon as possible. Looking at it this way, it seems that none of them have fallen well. The German media saw it more thoroughly, saying bluntly, the competition for chip subsidies between the United States and Europe will benefit Chinese manufacturers. They believe that the Chinese market is one of the important markets for global semiconductors and the amount of integrated circuits imported every year is huge, once exceeding 400 billion US dollars. At this time, the Chinese market has become a hot spot. In order to seize China's huge market share, companies on both sides are likely to use subsidies as a way to increase profits and lower the prices of their own semiconductor products to ship to mainland manufacturers. The implication is that their competition will actually benefit Chinese manufacturers. To support this, the German media also stated that the cost of the blockade has already appeared. The reason why I say this is probably because under the US chip ban, most companies have no possibility of shipping to the Chinese market, let alone price cuts to benefit China. But the reality is that many technology giants have already paid the price for the blockade. A typical example of this is NVIDIA. Currently, the A800 series of chips currently in stock have not yet found a more suitable alternative market. The new round of castrated chips for compliance and continued shipments has been dissatisfied by Chinese manufacturers. Even the American media stood up and asked, why do domestic manufacturers choose Huawei instead of NVIDIA? Isn't the answer obvious? In the context of blocking chips, China cannot obtain them from American chip companies, so it will naturally adopt domestic substitution methods to break through the restriction. This means that U.S. chip companies will be under increasing pressure on the mainland. Not only that, 
If domestically produced chips have the opportunity to expand overseas, they will inevitably move towards overseas markets and further compete with Western technology companies for the global market. By that time, faced with the possibility of losing most of the mainland market and weakening global competitiveness, American companies are more likely to adopt a price compromise approach to dominate the market. However, don't be fooled by such rhetoric. Once they take advantage of price to deal with the domestic chip market, the development of China's domestic chips will be indirectly affected. Because judging from the current actual situation, China's cutting-edge technological strength does lag behind theirs. And in order to diversify the supply chain strategy, China cannot completely exclude foreign chips. In general, it is still necessary to develop core hard power. Only when China's technological strength far overwhelms them will China have more say in semiconductors. What's funny? is that the subsidy policies of the United States and Europe have played a fueling role in Chinese manufacturers. The report pointed out that in response to the epidemic, the United States introduced a number of policies to stimulate the economy, including financial support for the chip industry. The European Union has also launched similar measures to strengthen the competitiveness of the local chip industry. However, these subsidy policies not only promote domestic companies in the United States and Europe, but also make the competitive advantages of Chinese manufacturers more obvious. Another phenomenon worth noting is that although the United States and Europe have blocked Chinese chips, Chinese manufacturers do not seem to be greatly affected. In fact, they have further consolidated their position in the international market by increasing production capacity and improving R&D capabilities. German media believes that this is because Chinese chip manufacturers have made tremendous progress in the past few years and they are better able to cope with external pressures and challenges. In short, although the chip subsidy policies of the United States and Europe are intended to strengthen local industries, they have benefited Chinese manufacturers. Although the blockade has begun, Chinese manufacturers are still able to use their own advantages to succeed in the international market. This phenomenon shows that China's chip industry already has strong strength and competitiveness and is continuing to grow and develop. In this regard, what do you think of chip subsidies in the United States and Europe? Can they really benefit China for domestic manufacturers? Welcome to leave comments, like and share this.
美国这一下是真的要刺激的，全球都不得不跟自己竞争起来了。那么他所希望的芯片产业再次回归自身，成为自己对中国最强大的遏制力，这一局面恐怕要实现的难度啊，也是空前的了。最后，那就是市场是否真的允许美。我们确实会被美国卡脖子，在技术上，我们的差距也非常明显，甚至从某种程度来说，会让从业者们，特别是已经习惯了全球化合作的从业者们，感到绝望。毕竟是他们没有经历过的新冷战。但在这样的博弈和对抗中，我们也不是没有机会，因为美国如今内忧外患，它看似强力的制裁，很可能由于逆全球化的展开，全球产业链的瓦解，如今美国暴行而出现的失道寡助，美国。内部的各种问题等等因素，而从致命的杀手锏变成我们要去克服的一些阻碍，这是一个难得的历史机遇。我相信我们是有应对和准备的，只不过暂时还没有放到桌面上，让我们这些老百姓看到而已。那么最后，中美双方会如何递招、拆招，我们就静观其变吧。好了，今天的视频就到这里。我们是域外编撰者，一群以笔专伤史的人。如果大家喜欢我们的视频，请长按点赞三秒，给我们一个强烈推荐。也希望大家可以多多转发、收藏、关注和留言。我们下期见。